be in Genesis chapter 2 today. I have a question while you... No, I'm in Genesis chapter 3. As you go there, I do have a question for you. We do honor our mothers on Mom's Day. I want to ask real quick, maybe one word, two words, three words. Why do we honor our moms on Mama's Day? Somebody can raise their hand. I'm not going to make fun of you or it's not a trick. I've conditioned you in such a way that you have stopped answering my questions. Why do we honor Mom's Day? Yes, brother. Because they deserve it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I we're they, God because he... No, I, I wanted to take the, the opportunity to share a, a quick experience I had Friday. Okay. I was listening, I was telling my Sunday school class this this morning. I'm oh, sorry, Mike. You need to probably get him, Mike. No, I don't need one. Talk to my chest. <laughs> I, I was listening to... <laughs> Yeah, I can't even look at that one. Uh, I was listening to an audio recording of a pastor's conference that took place back in April. On uh, It's called Together for the Gospel. And the recording I was listening to is an actual panel discussion. And discussion was on inerrancy of the Bible. Okay, The inspiration and inerrancy of the Bible. And people sit on this, this, this panel where... These are seminary professors, these are doctoral, doctors of uh, uh, theology, John Piper, Al Mohler, people have been pastors for uh, you know, 30, 40 years, retired, they're teaching pastors now. These are, okay, and as they went through, the first question was, why do you believe the Bible is the inspired word of God? That's the first question, and all six of them their, their answer was, because my mother told me. Okay? Because my mother told me. That was the first answer out of their mouth. And then, of course, they had these other answers that none of us understand anyway except for them. Okay? <laughs> but as I listened to that, and I was, I was at work listening to this, and after the third one, I started listening for it. And it was. And I thought, what, what a great Mother's Day. And here I am listening to this on Friday. Mother's Day is coming up. You know, what a great Mother's Day testimony that these people, all of them, you know, even though they can give you, you know, hundreds of reasons that we'd never understand, the first words out of their mouth were because my mother told me it was. Okay? And that's why I say we need to honor mothers. That is the legacy of our church right there. Because our mothers did it. Amen. You can applaud on that. That's very good. Uh, there's a famous apologist who went to college, and he, uh, he got there, and of course, as, as colleges and some colleges and the college that he went to was extremely hostile to the gospel. And, and later, after probably six months of just being indoctrinating with, with uh, materialism, sci uh, naturalism, if you will, someone asked him, why is it, I mean, why do you still believe this? I mean, you know, we're coming at you, we're refuting it from every, every point. Why do you still believe? And his response was that. And he says, until somebody can explain my mother's life, uh, I will never, ever uh, disbelieve. You see that in the, in the passage uh, in Timothy, or when Paul was talking to Timothy, his foundation of his faith first started in who? His grandma, then his mama, very much so. Um, I'm going to say this is unfortunate, but it is the same. Women outnumber men in churches. And if it isn't for our women uh, in America today, at least, I don't want to say the gospel will die, but the church will definitely suffer great um, consequences because of it. So... Uh, Amen to that. Uh, other reasons why we, why we should honor our mom. Yes, John. God commanded us to do it, whether they deserve it or not. <laughs> maybe they don't always. It, it's like respect for the office. Kind of. It's one of the commandments. Yeah. Honor your mother and father. That is the first commandment with a what? With a promise. With a promise. Very good. You might live long and, it connects. It, and prosper. It connects. It, 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 <laughs> You'll have to come up and do that later so we could get that on. <laughs> Other reasons why you, that you would honor your mom? Anybody? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, without her. <laughs> amen, amen. I, I, I thought a different, different word. You don't have to follow me on that. Um, I mean, 
what, what our moms sacrificed for us, what our moms are willing to endure uh, because of us. Uh, I think uh, Connor one day is really going to have to uh, pay special tribute to, to my wife, Dana, just because of the stuff that he puts her through on a daily basis. But uh, there are so many reasons why um, we should honor our moms. It should come naturally because they deserve it. Today, I want you... I, I want to bring a text to you that we've kind of made fun of in the past, and I think that's unfortunate, uh, given um, today's message, if you will. Uh, I want you to think of your moms, think of the women in your life, your wives, or your sisters, your grandmothers, and maybe maybe one of the reasons that, w- that we should pay so much special attention to them on this day, give them the honor, is what they have to embrace for that title. Let me say it again. Not that they are necessarily willing to embrace, but that they have to embrace because of the title. Today's Mother's Day passage is Genesis 3.16a. And it reads this. To the woman he, God said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. Now, we have had fun with that text before, and uh, I, I really don't want you to look at it as a, uh, in that light today. Um, This is one of those passages that um, has a great theological message, a great theological message, and we could just park on it. The, the theological message, as I see it, is God is saying to the woman, as he said to the man, as my child has brought me great pain, so too will your child bring you pain. He said that to Adam too, didn't he? He said, as, as, the, as the workman of the ground, remember man and, and woman were created from the ground, as the dirt has created me much pain, so too will the dirt cause you pain. And that is a great theological question. What I want you to look at, though, is put that text back up real quick, John, Genesis 3.16, eh? says, to the woman, he said this, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Other text says that he will increase the pain. I don't know if it was when I first came to Christ or when I was really just starting to study the Bible. I had always, and again, leave the passage up there, brother. Um, I had always thought of heaven and perfection or even before the fall as to be in a time and a period where it was pain-free. You know, has anyone else, else ever thought of that? The way that text read is he will increase the pain right there. I have a quick demonstration. Andrew, you're a man, right? Sure. Very good. Come on up here. Stand behind the candle, please. Place your hand right here. Okay, that's about the distance. I'm going to want you to put it there, okay? This is not a demonstration of your manhood, okay? You don't have to feel the need to go a long time. This is a demonstration of pain. Place your hand right there and just keep it there as long as you want as long as you want (laughs) there you go go ahead you could sit down some of them tried to stop you was that the moms in the room okay was it was there any men that that was thinking he could go josh what were you thinking 
Go ahead. Keep doing it. See, that's the difference between dad and moms, right? Dads are like, stop. But the, mom, the one mom, they gave you like three seconds, like, stop. And so, did you know pain is good? Pain is good. It tells you what? That you're still alive. That you're still alive and something is horribly wrong, right? Lepers do not feel pain. Am I right on that? A lot of, there are places where they could walk by and they could hit something and they'll never know. Well, they'll know uh, later, but they don't feel it. And what happens is that gets infected and sore and then that's where a lot of the, the <coughs> infection comes from and when they start losing body parts. So pain is good. So that's maybe one of the reasons why we had pain before. But I, I, I like the fact that pain tells you something is wrong and that you need to pay attention to it. One of the, what we do when we look at that passage right there, it says, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. I think sometimes we give this text disservice. When you read the curse that was placed on Adam, we generalize it. As you... Work the ground, it's going to produce thorns and thistles. Now, when we, we look at that, we say, okay, work is going to be very painful. But on this text, we get very specific. It is during, Chris, what do you got, how many more days? You, you don't know? You're not a prophet? Give me a guesstimate. Months. Okay, which, how long is a person pregnant for? How many? 40. 40. 40. So 22 minus 4, 18 more weeks to go, right? And then you will experience possibility pain. Okay. Might be. Might be. Are, did you, please don't go into detail. Before you got pregnant, did you realize, had you been told that this was going to be a painful process? Okay. But you're still willing to embrace that pain for the honor of having a child. Okay, good. I'm, keep that thought in your head. Thought in your head, okay. We generalize the cursed man, but we make this specific to just child-bearing pains. Here's something I want to entertain, though I think it's fair to say that's what that text means. He's, he's going to increase the pains during childbirth because you look at the Hebrew. I mean, there's, there's really no doubt that that's what, what God said to the woman. I think it's very possible, though, and in fact, I know this, that there are a lot of pains associated with bringing a child into this world that our women feel that don't just happen in the delivery room. It is before they get to the delivery room. It is in the delivery room. And it is for many, many, many years after. And though I don't want to give you a somber message, I want to discuss that today. Why? Because you must embrace this, women, this pain that you know that's coming, for that honor of being a mother. And in that, we must honor you. There are women, there are women maybe even in this congregation, that feel the pain, you can go ahead and take that off, brother, that feel the pain associated with bringing a child into this world, yet they will never, ever do so. They are barren. They have within them the desire that God placed in them to have a child, but yet they have a body that God gave them that can never have a child. They are a contradiction, if you will. And to the woman 
in this room or listening to us online or what have you. I have just one very quick message to give to you. God hears your cry. In fact, it is a cry that is recorded in Scripture over and over and over again. The Scripture that we looked at in Sunday school, I, I, I chopped it up a little bit, but here it is, the Hannah. In bitterness, this is Hannah's cry of Saul. Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. I am a woman who is deeply troubled, pouring out my soul to the Lord out of my great anguish and grief. I ministered to one young woman who had just found out that Though they've tried multiple times, she would never have a child. And I was, I, I, I think that I was speechless. That God gave her this desire and also the body. And I remember crying in the, in the counseling session. And I remember the words that I had to share with her. God may or may not open your womb. He will hear your cry. And he may say yea, and he may say nay. And I shared with this scripture behind us. Psalm 55, 22 says this, Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. Every one of us must face this reality. There are gifts that are given to some that we may never receive. The only promise in this earth is this. You only know completion if you have the giver in your life. To say it another way, if you have a child and you know not the Lord, you are not complete and you never will be. Say it another way. If you do not know that, if you do not have a child, and you have the Lord, you are complete. There's another pain associated with childbirth. One that I would imagine every woman in this room who has had a child may very well experience this just because of your biological makeup. You will lose a child. You may outlive your child. Be it Losing them in the womb, be it losing them at birth, be it losing them as a toddler. My wife and I ministered to someone who, who had lost one as, as a child, I believe in the Mansfield area. Be it losing a child at the age of 65. There is no pain like that one. God says this in Isaiah 55, before you put it up there, unless you've already done this, let me just give you a, a, a brief background of this one. This is 
a rhetorical question that, um, that Isaiah records that God asked. Now, God, what he wanted to do is illustrate how he would never forget those that are his, but he uses the bond that a mother has for their child that he himself has created in them. And this is what he says, but to Zion, go ahead, he said this, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. But God asks, God asks, can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? The answer is no. And there you have another contradiction. Ladies, God has created in you this bond for your child that can never, ever, for, for, forever and ever be broken. And yet, when you experience the loss of a child, the impossible has happened. There is separation. Deacons and teachers, I'm sure that you have ministered to a woman who has lost a child and that philosophical question has been asked, why? And it is part of the curse. It's not that the curse was on this individual, it's just that creation longs for the day that it can be brought back to one another. I don't know though, preachers and teachers and deacons or just someone who has a sympathetic ear to someone who has, who has gone through the experience of losing a child is if you've ever heard them say this, I want the pain gone. We are absent right now from that moment. So I can say this unapologetically that I probably would not say in the presence of one who had just lost a child, but I say this now without fear, especially if there is a woman here who has lost a child and on this Mother's Day, they are suffering a little. The pain cannot go away. Remember, sometimes pain is good. And the last thing you want is for the bond that you have between mother and child to be removed. The last thing that you want is for the love that you have for that child to be gone. And I submit to you that the only way that that pain could ever subside is for that which is so wonderful to be faded. So in that you must embrace the pain. It is not the pain that you need to be gone. What you need right now is for the restoration of all things to occur. The cross never said it was going to take away the pains in this earth. What the cross promises us is that restoration will one day come. I love what Jesus said. A death had just occurred. There was mourning going on. Even Jesus himself wept. If there was, if there was one person who could feel what it was like to be separated from somebody that they love, it was Jesus. Jesus wept when he saw him. But I love the interaction he had right there. He looks at these heartbroken women and he says these words. In John, he says... Do you have that? I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus said to her. I am the resurrection and the life and the one who believes in me will live even though they die. Whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you remember the Exodus, reading about it? Do you remember the final curse that was brought to the land in Egypt? It 
the destroying angel came down upon Egypt. And the firstborn child in every household died. And it says in the scripture that all of Egypt mourned. But not the households in Israel. Why? Because they had had a lamb and they had sacrificed the lamb and they took the blood and they applied the blood to the lintel and they applied the blood to the sides of the post right there. And the substitute protected them right there. My sisters who have lost a child, we don't mourn like those who don't have hope. Because we have Christ Jesus. Long not for the pain to be removed, but long for the restoration of all things. A mother cannot escape heartbreak. Children grow up. And they leave. In just a few short weeks, we will be celebrating my son Kyle's decision to get married by, I will actually get to perform the services. And my wife said, can you even do that? I'm a man, yeah, I can do that. She's looking at me laughing, he ain't even going to make it through it. And it will be hard. But if there was anyone that can joke with him during that time, it's me. So I have to sacrifice. My thing is going to be this. I'm going to take off my glasses. You know why? Because all your faces blur. And I really don't want to see my wife's face. Because if she thinks I'm going to be a blubbering idiot. (laughs) She's going to Niagara Falls. She's going to be happy. but I would also add very sad. A contradiction of sorts. Why? I don't think it's behind you, but it says in the scripture that a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. A new phase in life has begun. And that bond which is unbreakable in a sense is broken and two are united and they become one flesh. A joyous time, but one that comes with heartbreak. Doesn't even have to be when they get married. Andrew's leaving the house. I know I'm celebrating, not so my wife. She's, even though them two fight like cats and dogs sometimes, because they're the same person, oh my goodness they are. She, she would gladly have him stay for days and days after. I can imagine what it'll be like when, them t- when, when, when you leave. Although I couldn't find a video clip, I think this video clip best illustrates that, if you don't mind.
They even have commercials in ch church nowadays. What is that? <laughs> Did you know that there is even heartbreak when things go in accordance to God's will? There was a prophecy that was given to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Just after, mir just after the miracle birth, all births are mi uh, uh, a miracle. After the extraordinary miraculous virgin birth, Mary fixated, her fixated on her baby's face. Have you ever been around a new mother as the baby comes into the world? They just cannot stop looking at this child. Mary was no different. But as she was walking through the temple, there was a prophecy that was given. And I want to share you the prophecy, and it's behind me. Simeon pro prophesizes this. He says, this child, and he's talking about Jesus, is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many will be revealed. If you could just pause there, you could get it out there. And I would imagine on that text, leave that text up there for a second. The child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many of Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many will be revealed. I do not know if Simeon took a breath right there. I do not know if he had a pause right there, but I can imagine if there was a pause just for about three seconds, if that, Mary could have dreamed right there. Moms, they have ideas and thoughts of what their children are going to accomplish in their lives. Maybe your baby boy will be a hero on the basketball court, scoring lots of touchdowns. Obviously, if my mom had that dream for me, it didn't come true. Or maybe a soldier on the battlefield. Moms have dreams of their daughters maybe dancing to the applause of thousands, or maybe walking down that aisle in a beautiful dress as the congregation stands up in tears and looks at how beautiful she is. Mothers have expectations of their children. Maybe they will grow up and lead a country or preach the gospel or cure cancer or break the poverty chain or break the curse that's in the family. Moms have expectations of their children. But though they be mom, their child does not belong to them. Ladies, God has blessed you as Randy has so very well articulated with one of the most ultimate responsibilities ever, and that is to equip your child with the knowledge of him to, get, to demonstrate by your own actions, I might say, of what it is to be a person in faith. And if there is anybody in, in, in this world, not the pastor, not the Sunday school teacher, but the mother who is going to equip the child to be who they are in Christ, it is you. You have just one opportunity to show them what it is like to be dependent upon Him and to wholeheartedly follow Him. But the prophecy continues to Mary. And the sword will pierce your own soul too. As I was reflecting on that text this week, I thought of the different times that Mary believed that that prophecy was coming true. Maybe it was when Jesus was about 12 years old and he was in the temple. And it, was, it says in that text that it was, it was like the first home alone, okay? This is Mary and, J and Joseph. They're excited. They just got done celebrating. They leave the temple, and it was three days later when they realized Jesus wasn't there. How many of you moms right now have lost your child for 30 seconds?
Is there any greater fear? Three days. I wonder if Mary believed that the prophecy had come true. Or how about the time that Jesus was, he was outside, he was inside, he was with the crowds, and, and his mother had come up, and, and his brothers, the, the stepbrothers, remember, different father, had come up, and they wanted to speak to Jesus. So an attendant came in, and they said, Jesus, your mother and your brothers are here. And without missing a beat, Jesus says, who's my mother and brothers? It is these. I wonder if Mary felt some rejection there. Moms, have you ever felt your children reject you? That was not the moment that her soul would be pierced. I don't know if it was with the first lash that Jesus took. I don't know if it was the nails piercing his skin. I can almost imagine that it was standing at the foot of the cross looking up. Her son looking down. Woman, that man right there, my disciple, is your son. It was God's will that Jesus died. Ladies, they are your children but they do not belong to you. And whatever plan you have for them, God has another. Some of you will witness your children being disciplined by the Lord in a way that you just cannot fathom. But as you have equipped them, the discipline is for their own good. Some of them will make choices in their life. Some of them will, will choose to be the wayward son, the wayward daughter. Some of them will choose to follow him wholeheartedly, but yet have pains and problems in their whole life. And that is a heartbreak. I do not preach this message to make you sad. I hope if some of you are hurt, and I do hope there's some healing here, but I want to tell you something, and, and I want this message to ring clear because this is all I got for you. This is really my only point. Moms? Did you know the pain was coming? Yeah, you knew it. But you chose that path anyway. You embraced it. Though I'm quite pot positive you would forego any of the pain you know it comes with the territory man asked me one time he said did God know that, that, that humanity was going to fall into sin and did he know it and I said yeah he knew it it says in Ephesians that the cross was even, was even uh, before you know that's the foundation of the world he had the backup plan if you will before he even created everything he knew it he said if God knew that his people were going to turn their back and bring him so much pain why did he have why did he create them my answer to the question was this have you met your mother The answer is this. To 
be able to hold your child. Even for a brief moment, that love that you have is worth all the pain from this day to that. Walking them down the aisle, seeing them off to school, scraping off the blood from their knee, wiping the tear from their eye. If no pain meant that you could not experience that, you would gladly, wholeheartedly embrace the pain. And for that, we give you honor. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for our moms. Thank you for the order in which you created things. Thank you for the women here today who make it possible for not only us to exist, but us to know you. I thank you for the patriots, the spiritual rocks in our life. We call them mom. On this day, Father, I ask that you just bless them. Bless them with the knowledge of this, of whatever pains that they've gone through, you've heard their cries, whatever, th whatever they are experiencing today, the redemption of all things is coming, that the restoration of all things is coming. And there is a new day. But even in that, you've given them such a precious gift. We ask that our moms be blessed on this day and every day afterwards. It is in the precious and most holy name I pray. Amen.